Hey guys and welcome to another very exciting video. One of the questions that I get asked the most on my channel is what is the best 3D application? What should I learn? Cinema 4D? Maya. 3D Studio Max? Houdini? What about Blender? Now there is no simple answer but I want to talk a little bit about the different 3D applications, talk about the strengths and the weaknesses to hopefully help you figure out what might be best for you. First off, and I've talked about this quite a bit before, there is no such thing as the best 3D program. They all have different strengths and weaknesses and it depends on what you want to do, so it's a very personal thing. The reason I use best in the title for these videos is because that's usually what people search for and I really just want to help you guys figure out what might be best for you. For that, I do want to talk about all of the big 3D programs that people usually look at when they're thinking about getting into 3D or filmmaking or visual effects or motion graphics. And the first thing I want to talk about is 3D Studio Max versus Maya. It's actually quite an interesting story because 3D Studio Max was released in the early 90s, developed by Autodesk, and Maya came out in the late 90s, developed by Elias Systems. But in 2005, Autodesk actually bought over Maya. And what happened is that suddenly Autodesk had two 3D application, 3D Studio Max and Maya, that kind of did the same thing. But it's kind of hard to market two products that do the same thing. And so Autodesk started moving them into different directions. 3D Studio Max became much more known for architecture, engineering, product design, more static imagery, but also engineering because it integrates well with AutoCAD, whereas Maya has kind of become the weapon of choice in the filmmaking visual effects industry because it's got really powerful animation capabilities. It's very popular, very widespread, it's very customizable. It's got an extensible language that can be used to build lots of tools and pipeline things around it. And so Maya is really the tool. If you want to get into filmmaking, visual effects, do learn Maya. That's kind of where most things are headed at the moment. If you're more into the architecture side of things or product design or engineering, like you want to build cars, 3D Studio Max is probably where I'd go. Now, while Maya is certainly the dominant player when it comes to filmmaking and visual effects, a new player within that space, not in general, has been around for a while as well, is Houdini. Houdini has gotten popular because of the demand for a lot of organic effects like destruction, fluids, fires, explosions, fumes, disintegration. A lot of those style of effects that you see in like Avengers movies, for example, a lot of that is done with Houdini because Houdini, as opposed to 3D Studio Max, Maya and Cinema 4D, Houdini is a procedural 3D application. It's a very different workflow and allows you to kind of mish and mash and flow data it's kind of like a data pipeline, but you can transform things in ways that isn't possible in traditional 3D software tools. And that's why it's starting to get really popular. Obviously, procedural programs require a lot of computing power, but with computers getting more powerful, that now becomes more accessible. And therefore, I think Houdini is just really taking off. So Houdini is definitely also a great tool to start learning if you want to get into visual effects. The cool thing about Houdini is it's got a free apprentice version, has all of the features of the pro versions, except that you know the rendering is a little bit limited and you do get a watermark. But other than that, great tool, get started learning it. I've got some beginner tutorials on my channel as well if you want to check it out. It's difficult though. It's a very different workflow. You need a very different mindset. It's a very data driven as well. So it can take a long time to get into it. People joke about the learning wall of Houdini. It's not a learning curve, it's a learning wall. But once you unlock it, there's amazing things you can do with it. So Maya and Houdini are definitely the two tools that I'd look at if I want to get into filmmaking visual effects. Now, the other side when you're talking about video obviously is motion graphics. And for clean motion graphics, abstract art and animation, also product design, Cinema 4D is really the place to go. The renders come out really nice and clean. It's a very powerful tool. It's really easy to get into. Cinema 4D out of the whole lot is probably the easiest one to just open it up, the interface is much more intuitive and fluid. It's easy to create things to put things together and make stuff that looks really nice. It's got a lot of plugins like MoGraph is a very powerful set of tools that you have within Cinema 4D to create really cool abstract animations and motion graphics. So motion graphics are definitely go into Cinema 4D, filmmaking, visual effects, Maya and Houdini, and then architecture, design, more product stuff, I'd go into 3D Studio Max. Now the elephant in the room is well, what about Blender? Blender is a 3D program. That's cool. It's open source. Anyone can use it. Personally, I actually really like Blender. I think Blender is a great program. It's really powerful. 
you can do destruction in it. It's got full dynamic capabilities, volume rendering, fluid simulations. It's got powerful animation rigging capabilities. So why isn't everyone using it? Why should I learn Cinema 4D, 3D Studio Max, May, and all these other tools if Blender is free and I can just use it now? There are two main reasons why Blender is not more extensively used in the industry. The first one is simply history. When a lot of these filmmaking visual effects studios first came up, the main tools that were available was 3D Studio Max, Maya and Cinema 4D. So all of their pipelines, their skills, their people have been built around those tools. If you're now trying to introduce a new tool, it means you have to change all of your pipelines. You have to retrain all of these people. And then if you're just one of many studios and you're the only one changing to a new tool and nobody else is using it, you can't interchange files like those those whole workflows, the pipelines, everything breaks and it's a huge amount of cost to switch over and introduce something new. Therefore, in all of the filmmaking and visual effects studios, most of the traditional tools are used. Maya, Houdini is a new player on the market, but again, it's kind of been built on top of the pipeline rather than you know, shifting anything else out. 3D Studio Max, Cinema 4D. So those are really the tools that are widely spread, they're used everywhere, and you're not gonna miss out by learning one of those. The second reason is simply lack of support. If you're a film studio or a visual effects studio and you've got a work due in a month and it's a million dollar contract and suddenly there's a bug in the program or something doesn't work. With Blender, there's no support. It's open source, it's freeware. You're not paying anyone for a license. So there is no team liable for that product. There's nobody you can just call up and say, hey, this doesn't work. Send your engineers over now. We need this fixed because we need to get this done. So big movie studios need big teams like Autodesk behind 3D Studio Max and Maya to provide support if anything goes wrong. They're there, they're liable, they've got contracts in place to deal with all of that. Because Blender is open source and free, you know, if, if something goes wrong, it's like, just wait for the next release. So I don't see it changing in existing movie studios. If new movie studios come up, it might start being introduced, but I, I think they'd still struggle to then integrate with all of the existing studios because they still have pipelines set up around 3D Studio Max, Maya, Cinema 4D, Houdini, all of the big programs that are already out there. Now, personally, I actually really love Blender. I mainly do videos for YouTube, and if you are just doing it for hobby and fun and you just want to get into it, just learn Blender. It's an amazing tool. It's really easy to use and really powerful. Also, do note, while obviously learning Blender isn't the same as learning Cinema 4D, 3D Studio Max or Maya, the concept of working with 3D, the concept of modeling, animation, rigging and materials, um, physics and all of that, they're very transferable. So what you learn by learning Blender, you likely can transfer quite easily into one of the other 3D programs. So, you know, there's still value in learning it. And obviously, if like me, you're just doing it for fun, for hobby, do get yourself Blender. You're not paying for anything. And I'm actually really excited about Blender 2.8 coming out this year. There's some massive changes that I'm really excited for. But, you know, topic for another video. Finally, just very quickly, and I did touch on this a little bit, in terms of complexity to learn, the easiest out of those programs to learn is probably Cinema 4D, just because the interface is much more intuitive, it's much easier to get into. The next one up is probably 3D Studio Max, as long as you're kind of doing more of the basic stuff. But 3D Studio Max I actually find quite intuitive as well. Maya, again, kind of a notch up from that, gets a little bit more complex, but also because it is quite a bit more powerful, especially when you get into animation and rigging and a little bit more of the complexities around there. And again, I'm not a 3D artist, so all of that to me is kind of magic anyways. Then the one definitely on top, probably with a little bit of a distance, is Houdini, because Houdini is really complex because it's a procedural workflow. It works very different. You need a very different mindset. But again, Houdini is just you can create some amazing stuff in it. So it's definitely worth learning. Get yourself the Apprentice version. It's free, fully powerful, has all of the features of the Pro version, except for a watermark and a smaller render frame. But yeah, just learn what makes sense to you. It depends so much on what you want to do. If you want to get into filmmaking and visual effects, I would recommend get into Maya. Maya is the weapon of choice for the filmmaking visual effects industry. Or if you want to specialize on visual effects and you love explosions and fluids and blood splatters and smoke and that sort of stuff, Learn Houdini. Houdini is also a really great tool for that. If you want to create top-notch motion graphics, abstract art, title animation, stuff like that, look at Cinema 4D. It's also nice and easy to learn, but it is really powerful. You can create some amazing stuff in it. If you're more architecture, design, engineering focused, 3D Studio Max probably makes the most sense. And again, if you're just doing it for hobby and for fun, I can highly recommend Blender. I've been using it for quite a little while. There's still a lot for me to learn and a lot of tutorials for you guys to make. But you know, just you have to figure out 
what do you want to do, how much complexity do you want to deal with, and, and figure out what's best for you. But as I already said, there just is no simple answer to what is the best 3D program. It depends so much on what you want to do with it, where you want to go, what level of complexity you are happy with. But hopefully this video gave you a little bit of an overview of the different 3D programs so then you can hopefully figure out what may be best for you. And that is all there is to it. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button. And if you want to watch more, just click these links over on the right hand side. If you want to support me in what I do in this channel, be sure to check out my Patreon page. And as always, thank you very much for watching and until next time, I will see you later.